Oh, too many choices. Yes. Welcome back, Maverick Gamers. Today's video is all about choices. More specifically, all the choices that players have to make when they're faced with decision making in Dungeons and Dragons. Now we all know making decisions in life can be really difficult under the best of situations, let alone playing in a fantasy role playing game where your every decision is going to decide whether or not you save the kingdom or perish in a fiery blaze at the hands of a dragon. Making decisions in an isolated bubble is sometimes difficult, sometimes easy, but when you expand that to include an entire party worth of players, all expecting you to make the right decision at the right moment, it can be downright crippling. In today's video, I'm going to show you some tips that can make those really hard decisions a little bit easier on you, and hopefully make your games of Dungeons & Dragons a little bit less stressful and a little bit more enjoyable. Never underestimate the value of a good, deep breath. Just take a moment, take a step back from the game, look around the table, temper your expectations, let everybody know that you're just going to take a breath. You're going to absorb what the Dungeon Master just said, and you're just going to formulate a new idea. Taking a breath is probably the best thing you can do before jumping into a really important decision in D&D. A lot of players don't realize that Dungeons & Dragons is actually a team game. It's easy to get caught up in what you're going to do and how these actions are going to affect you specifically, but looking around the table you soon realize that what you do does affect the other players. Use this to your advantage. Rather than operating within your own little world, reach out across the table, ask your partner, ask the dungeon master, get a sense of what they might do in this situation just to help you formulate a better idea on what you're going to do. One of the things that I notice that my players don't do enough is actually looking at their character sheet. D&D Beyond actually has a list of all the actions that you can take in the course of your turn. A little hidden gem is the action known as the ready action. The ready action is essentially getting ready for what's going to happen next, or in a better way of saying it, what is going to happen to your character before you preemptively decide to do something. The ready action allows you to use your standard action to swap it out for a reaction. So, to give you an example, if you're faced with a pack of gnolls that are circling around you and you're not quite sure what's going to happen on their end, you can tell your dungeon master, I'm going to take the ready action. That ready action needs to be contingent on a specific thing happening. So you can say, I'm going to take the ready action and if the gnolls decide to attack me, I'm going to attack them first. It takes your action and converts it to a reaction. Essentially meaning that as soon as that trigger happens, you get to spring forward with your declared Fight! It's a great way of sitting back, taking a look and seeing what's going to happen without actually forfeiting any kind of preemptive strike or preemptive action on your part. Now this next one might be a little bit controversial depending on your dungeon master. At my tables, I actually let the players swap initiative with each other as long as the initiative doesn't leapfrog over top of my monster initiatives. The reason for this is not all players are created alike. Sometimes having your friend go first when you have a great idea that can really shift the tides of battle or whatever is happening in the encounter actually would be more beneficial if you go before your friend. Reaching out across the table and having a conversation about this and as long as your dungeon master is okay with it, I usually just let my players swap initiatives as their plan comes together. This simulates kind of just holding back and communicating in the intensity of battle. Last but not least is ask your dungeon master for clarity. What I mean by this is that in the heat of battle or in the heat of describing things, heck, even the imagination is running rampant at this point. It's always good to take a step back, ask the dungeon master for clarity on things that may not be 100% clear in the situation. This is especially true if you're using theater of the mind gameplay versus tactical gameplay with miniatures and virtual tables. Knowing where you stand and where the enemy is is really going to play a big factor in your decision making as far as whether you're going to attack or whether you're going to defend or heck, even if you're going to run away. Remember, your dungeon master is not the enemy. You are actually participating in a shared story experiment. So asking your DM what might be the best option or just asking him to clarify what exactly is going on in the battle so you can make the best possible decision for the story and also to help your teammates out. It's okay, we're all in this together. I hope this video has helped you out as far as making decisions and making that big play moment in your game of Dungeons and Dragons. Remember, we're all having a great time together and it's okay to just reach out, talk to people, ask questions in order to make the best possible decision for the story and make sure your character survives to the next session. 
Thanks for tuning in, guys. Hope you're all having fun playing Dungeons & Dragons out there, and we'll talk to you soon. Before you go, I need your help. I'm trying to grow the exposure of what we do here at Maverick Games. My goal is to actually bring information to parents and students around the world in hopes that they can see gaming as a path forward for learning, academics, and even support of neurodivergency. Please subscribe, make sure you click on those notifications, and I hope that you'll find content here that'll be helpful for you and maybe others. Thank you very much, and thanks for tuning in.